This is the Stromer ST2 electric bike. I'm looking at it in mid 2015, and this is firmware 1.4. They don't have the Bluetooth uh, mobile app compatibility yet, but a lot of improvements have been made. This is still a really awesome bike, and so I wanted to do an update. The last time I looked at it was at Interbike, that was late 2014, and it's it's a phenomenal bike. There is so much to say about this bike. I'm just gonna to jump right in. It weighs about 61 pounds, so it's not super duper light, but it has an enormous battery and a really smooth, quiet, and powerful direct drive rear hub motor. Okay, so that's gonna be fast, responsive, just it's really fluid the way this bike rides. It uses a TMM4 torque sensor right there that can actually be adjusted with the settings. The display panel actually uses force touch screen technology so the reason they did that initially I was like why isn't it responding you know like a phone where it's just it's sensing the electricity or or um, maybe just the the heat of, of your body that's because if you're using a glove it's not gonna be able to sense those so you actually have to push down a little bit um, I've gotten a little bit more familiar with it than when I was at Interbike and um, it's awesome so let me just hit the bike specs this comes in two sizes 17 or 20 got the 20 inch frame size right here. They're both high step, but that's sort of a diamond style frame that's gonna be really solid and stiff. Of course, you're gonna have to step over that top tube. So if you're shorter, get the 17 and just note that you might have to swing your leg over. Um, you actually don't have to swing it over too high though because they've got this rack that's relatively low, very, very close profile with the, the rear wheel. Front and rear aluminum fenders really nice you know and they're they feel solid and everything they look beautiful and this like city kit thing now it comes on all of the st2s so that's a really cool little upgrade you know this is a, nearly seven thousand dollars for this bike so you're paying a lot but you're also getting a lot the rear rack uses standard gauge tubing which is awesome it means it's going to work with your clip-on panniers or whatever but it's not especially strong it says max 17 kilograms so you know a lot of times other racks i've seen it's like 25 kilograms so that's that's kind of a question mark but it still has the integrated lights front and rear those run off the main battery pack and in fact we have a supernova up here but there's also this nice sort of integrated daytime running light as well as a usb charging port so you can imagine if you had your your phone at some point attached to the handlebars and you were kind of powering it off of the bike. It's nice that you can power everything off of the battery and it is enormous, I'll get there. Um, we've got these nice uh, hydraulic disc brakes, Magura right there. They do have a motor inhibitor and regenerative braking trigger right there. That was one of the questions last time I wrote it and there, there are multiple ways to activate that that I'll get to later. If you pull those, those, uh, those levers, they activate the caliper down here, these are carbon steel rotors, 180 millimeter front and rear. And you can see that both of the, the wheels use these 15 millimeter through axles. Okay, and the benefit of that is it's gonna be lighter, stiffer, and easier to kind of install properly than a standard skewer would be. And see they have this 20 Newton meter torque rating. That means how tight you're supposed to, to get that on the front and the rear. So really cool. They don't have quick release, but you know, if you brought an Allen wrench along, it would work pretty well. And I've been told by the shops that, see that silver ring in there? There's a really easy kind of quick disconnect um, of when you're taking off the rear wheel, that it's, it's actually not very hard to disconnect the, the motor systems from this thing. Of course, you've still got to deal with the chain and um, the derailleur and everything over here. We've got 10-speed Shimano Dior XT, excellent uh, derailleur in the back, really quality stuff there. And then we've got two-speed chain ring in the front Shimano 105 decent and I'd say above average uh, good stuff you can see that there's a hollow spindle or bottom bracket here same thing lighter stiffer and the the bearings are uh, they're sort of external bearings so they're further out towards the edges which means that it's not gonna sort of bend you can imagine if the bearings were inside there's just more metal um, from where it's leveraged at the edge and, and that can bend and just not feel as stiff and that's really what this is going for stiff fast you can see this really burly kind of oversized um, tapered head tube right there for the front fork uh, excellent stuff these nice for considering you know out of the box got the reflectors their aluminum alloy platform pedals they've even got a bash guard aluminum alloy built right in so just solid you know you ride this around you wouldn't have to worry about nicking those teeth too much if you had a curb or something you notice the kickstand over here is 
kind of unique. It's got a big spring built into it. If you even just tip the bike up, it automatically flips up. Okay, so it's self-retracting kickstand. That's a requirement in Europe for these speed pedelec bikes, which this is. Top speed on this is like 28 miles per hour. And that's not just because the battery and the motor are maxing out at that. It's, it's electronically limited. And you know they want you to know that because it's like, okay, the motor's rated at 500 watts, but it's 800 watt peak output. And it's, you know, they're really just like power, as much power as you can get. And you do feel it when you're on this thing. So I don't want to get too much into that. Another, um, another thing that's a requirement in Europe is they've got kind of like one of those bar end mirrors for safety and these brake levers, see how they have like a ball at the end? That, that's another requirement for speed pedal X so that your fingers don't slide off, I guess. It's in there extra long versus just two fingers. And it's because you're going faster, it's a safety thing. So I think that pretty much covers the whole thing. Again, about 61 pounds on this. I think the motor is uh, about eight pounds the battery pack in there is just about 10 pounds. I was measuring it earlier and you know that it adds up, but there's really high quality stuff here. This is actually an Ergon um, seat that's branded Stromer, but really comfortable, kind of soft and just a good fit, kind of active. You see that narrow um, nose on that. It's, it's good stuff. Uh, 31.6 uh, millimeter diameter on the seat post if you wanted to get like a Fudbuster or something, but there is no quick release on the seat. And again, maybe it's because it's like, hey, you're commuting. You don't want people messing with it. I gotta love this. They've got bottle cage mounts on the down tube. You could use that for adding a pump, portable pump, or like one of those locks or, or, you know, or just a standard bottle cage with water, which would be nice right now because it is very hot. I'm in Dallas, Texas. I'm actually, uh, I was checking this out at Small Planet E-Vehicles, getting a lot of help from Zach at the store there. He's a big fan of this bike. And it's always nice to get sort of anecdotal shop feedback. Um, and he had, you know, mostly great stuff to say about this. More ergon accessories. These are the ergonomic grips. They've got, they're locking at the end right here. It's really nice. Cheapy, but works. Integrated bell and uh, trigger shifters right here on the right and the left. So they stay out of the way. Really clean cockpit. And, you know, the display panel is right there. Uh, one of the things I noticed at first was like, gosh, it's bright. You know, what if it's nighttime are you going to be blinded and this thing automatically kind of dims itself when you turn the bike on so um i guess before we get there i should say this is the charger it's about 2.5 pounds so it's a little bit heavier than some of the other chargers i've seen uh, out there a lot of them are like 1.5 pounds but this does charge at three amps so it's a little bit whoa it's a little bit faster you can hear it's plasticky <laughs> as i drop it there is a fan inside it's relatively quiet but you know just Keep that in mind if you're if you're taking this to work with you. You can charge the battery on or off the bike, which is really nice. Um, and the charger uses this really fancy energy bus standard. It's magnetic, so when you come over to the bike, if we you know plug this end into the wall, and then we put this up like this, it kind of automatically attaches, and the mag magnets hold it there. Now you might notice that the cover is missing. So this might be another little complaint. I think it, it, there's a rubber flap that should be there that just fell off with use. And it is replaceable. They're gonna replace that at some point, but you know, worth keeping in mind. Um, this is, is the battery door. So the battery is built right into the down tube. And, and that's a huge advantage for this and other bikes uh, that, that use this sort of layout because it balances the weight. You know, it really brings some of it forward. It keeps it down low. It conceals it. This bike blends in. I mean, look at it. It's it's beautiful. People might not even know you're riding an electric bike, not just because of the design, but because the motor is so quiet. So as I was mentioning before, this is a Sino drive from C TDCM, um, 500 watt nominal uh, a direct drive gearless rear hub motor. Okay, so the way this works is there really aren't any moving parts inside. There's just magnets around the uh, perimeter of that, that hub. And when you activate the electricity from, from the battery and the controller sends different um, amps to the, to the motor, it, it just, it's like an electromagnet that repels those, those magnets and that's what makes you go, okay? So whereas a geared motor, it's got the same thing, it's just much smaller and then they use planetary gears to sort of um, step that power up. So you, the motor's spinning really fast and then they, I guess they step it down, the speed down, but you're getting torque that way. Those tend to be lighter, they don't tend to last as long, they also make more noise and they just aren't as smooth. I mean, this is a really beautiful setup, it's just heavier again at that eight pound um, mark. So keep that in mind. This is your 
TMM4 torque sensor. So as you push down on the pedals, it's actually sensing how hard and it's, it's responding with power output. It's not just on or off, which is what a lot of more affordable, kind of older style electric bikes do, or cruisers, and it's not a bad thing, but those ones just sense, are you moving, or are you not moving? This one actually senses how hard are you pedaling, you know, how hard are you pushing, and, and I love that. It's, you really notice it when you get on this thing. Um, and they've got some really cool sort of diagnostics to show you what kind of voltage output you'd be getting, depending on how hard you're pushing. So I'll show you that in a second. I want to actually take the battery out. Here are the keys. And I just put it in here like this. I think the idea is that it's a little bit tougher to hack this than, there we go. So I turn it, see how it slides out. Keep an eye on the this side up, right? Because you could accidentally flip it. 814 watt hours, that's almost the kilowatt hour that I was talking about. That would be a thousand watt hours. And that's a 10 pound battery. So it is heavy, you know, you feel it compared to a lot of batteries I weigh like five pounds. It does have a little, handle at the top, which makes it real easy to lift like that. You know, it's pretty beautiful. That's the inside right there. And at the bottom, you can see there's the energy bus port, which would plug right into that again, being magnetic. So good stuff. I'm going to toss this back in here, gently slide it in, make sure that part's folded down and then click it. There we go. Okay, so it wasn't locking at first because I had to kind of take the key out and, and do that sort of one-handed, but we got it. It's not too bad. I love that the wires are all integrated through the frame. They've got the nice wire wrap. Um, again, just the aesthetics on this thing are awesome. So I, I'm not sure if I, I told you the voltage. So we've got a 48 volt battery with 17 amp hours and that's that 814 watt hour total. There's the 500 watt motor. Let's go ahead and turn it on. You do that by pressing this button down here. Isn't that cool? So if we push that, let's see if it comes on. It says software version 1.4. It shows our pedal assist level. I left it in three, and that's what we're still seeing here. You can arrow up or down with this nice little cockpit over here. It kind of reminds me of the Specialized Turbo. It's just real minimal. You know, it's not distracting or anything. Um, one of the downsides, I guess, or just a difference is that instead of having a display panel right here, it's down here. So you've kind of got to look down a little bit more if you want to get feedback about um, how fast you're going, how far you've gone. And you can change between those different readouts by pressing this screen. So I press it once, it says trip distance, trip time, press it again, clock, trip speed, and uh, miles per hour is always at the top. So the standard menu is miles per hour, speed, battery, and then your level of assist. There are three, but there is actually kind of a little throttle mode. If you hold plus, it gets you up to 12 miles per hour and it's pretty satisfying. It works really well. So I was impressed with that. If you hold minus, it activates regen. In fact, I might see if we can do that while standing still. I'm holding minus. Yep, recoup, they call it. Neat. And then we've got the light button. So as it stands, we're just using sort of the daylight. And again, there's the USB charge thing there. And that's just for fun. I mean, it's like a sports car, it's LEDs. It's really stylistic. But that supernova, if we press the light button up here, boom, that comes to life. And it is super bright, super solid. It's really well fastened. And we've got that rear light as well. So they both run off the battery. They don't take much electricity. Um, I think it has a system that as you're getting low on power for the motor, it stops that. So you've still got some, some energy left to use with the lights. Let's get back into this menu here real quick. So if you press that bottom button again, the main button, it brings up all these menus. Lock basically uses the battery to set the motor in regen mode, like a really tough level of regen, so you can't move the bike efficiently. You effectively can't pedal it away. And you could carry it away. You could wait for the battery to finally run out someday and use this as a regular bike, but it'd be a 61 pound bike. And uh, essentially it's just, it's like a cafe lock, but built right in. That's pretty cool. But you do need a pin to unlock it. So be careful if you don't know the pin. Uh, move which basically it's, it's kind of like a walk mode. So if you're walking along with the bike, you press that and then you use the, the plus button up here to walk it. And then we've got the sensor. You can set the torque sensor to higher or lower. So depending on what type of rider you are, if you want it like really sensitive or if you want to give yourself more of a workout, it's 
you know, it's all built right in. You have a lot of control right there. And then menu. We've got just so many options in here. Bike, there's brake mode, torque systems, totals. We've got the light LCD, so daylight LCD brightness. Like I was saying, when you turn on the lights, the LCD um, becomes backlit, if you can see that right now. So I might leave it in that mode to make it easier for you to see. Settings, whoops. One of the things that's hard about this is I feel like I'm pressing it, but you almost have to press below where you want for it to work. So time, I guess you can just set the time of the thing. Let's see if I can, okay. Pin, no pin set, oh boy, this is where you set the lock. <laughs> yeah, and then let's go back. So to get into like all these extra features and stuff on this bike, what you do is you hold the right brake lever and then you press menu and then you release the bright brake lever and then check it out, it brings up the menu again, but this time there's service, okay? Service is really cool. Um, you can go through and actually kind of check all the diagnostics. It goes through and says, oh, is the motor working? Is the battery working? Is it?" And it checks everything for you. So before you go to the shop or whatever, you can kind of diagnose it yourself. Error list shows you all the errors the bike has had. And then sensor, and this is what I was talking about. When I push down on that pedal, it's actually gonna show me um, you know, the offset of the torque sensor. So I'm pushing on it now, and hopefully you can see that 1.5, 1.6, 1 1.7, you know, volts. So that, that's it dynamically reading how hard I'm, I'm pushing. And even the brakes, as you pull these, it's giving me some feedback about when regen would be active. So I'm pulling, 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 oh, regen would be active but I haven't pulled all the way to actually make the brakes work. So it's just, there's a lot of like little things that are built into this that I think are kind of fun. This might be a good time to get on the bike and actually show you how it rides. But I, I do want to mention um, that this bike doesn't have a suspension fork on it right now. And you know, it is a little bit stiffer as we were talking about with the, the hollow bottom bracket and with the nice big oversized uh, head tube and you know the rigid fork that's great for for speed and for just ex exerting that power and transferring it into motion but it can be a little rough sometimes going over you know rocks and cracks and bumps to help offset that uh, they've got these really nice big balloon tires they're schwabby balloon big ben 26 by 2.15 and they've got this nice sort of hybrid tire pattern, as you can see. So it's grippy, uh, and but it's still pretty smooth and, and kind of soft and forgiving. And I like that, especially at higher speed. It's nice to have just, you know, something offering you some, some cushion in addition to that seat. I'm gonna hop on this thing. There's the kickstand, it kicked itself up. Let's see here, I'm gonna try to do, well, let's see here. Yeah, it's just, it's taking me right now. I'm in level three. I was gonna show you the uh, little mini throttle mode here. So starting from rest, I press plus. There we go. pretty cool you know that was all in throttle mode right there I wasn't pedaling at all now I'm gonna do um, torque sensing assist 3 and then I'm gonna activate regen by just gently squeezing the brakes and getting some of that energy back really cool really cool feature maybe I'll do on the fly regen by holding the arrow recoup recoup and it's effectively slowing me down. It's very cool. Very good setup that way. Okay, and now I start pedaling again. And it shuts off.
definitely one of the quieter and faster electric bikes I've tried. You know, people who are more active and just kind of sporty style tend to really like this bike. Um, this and the Specialized Turbo are some of the some of the pricier but also more technologically advanced electric bikes I've tried. And they really, they really perform. It's impressive. You know, it's definitely a car replacement situation here. Um, and I'd estimate that this could go at least 50 miles. I think they say it's like up to 100 or something like that. It depends on the level of assist that you're riding in and the terrain and everything. But, uh, you know, it's got Samsung lithium ion cells. They're known for being lightweight, long lasting. And they do offer a two year warranty on the motor and battery or up to a thousand full charge cycles. So you're getting pretty good support. Stromer's been around for a while, several years that I've actually been reviewing their stuff. And this is of course the nicest that I've seen. <laughs> it's kind of my favorite model. So yeah, I think that's a pretty good overview. Once they do have the mobile app, it'll be even cooler to check this thing out and see what other features you've got, maybe like GPS or something like that. I don't know what they've got planned, uh, but that's it. That's the Stromer ST2 for the full write-up on this and more information. I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com.